Hi, this is Abul Hussein coming to you direct from London, the United Kingdom, and welcome to another episode of the SMA Mastermind podcast. Now, if you have not joined our Facebook group yet, find the link above or below this video or go to smmamastermind.com, especially if you're looking to start or scale a digital marketing agency. Now, with that out of the way, I have a very special guest joining me all the way from Florida. Uh, she is actually a former Brit who has been out in the States for 17 years. She is the founder of Females in Social Media and Digital Marketing, and we're going to talk about her digital marketing career and what she's been up to uh, over the last couple of years, I suppose. So, Laura Little, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm like so excited to be a part of your community and to um, be talking with you and just get to know you and answer questions and jive about our topic. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining me because I know you've got children around as well. And, you know, it's <laughs> hard to balancing everything with, with COVID and everything. Now, I mean, a lot of people who are going to be watching this, they're going to think, hold on, what's a British girl doing out in the US? So how about a bit of an introduction, I suppose, for the people who don't know who you are, uh, how you got into the digital marketing space. I can hear your dog bark. It's I'm sorry. Gonna go with the flow. <laughs> This is like um, Zoom 101, right? Like, just go with it, ignore what's happening around you, stay professional. Absolutely. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been, uh, I was, I graduated from uh, the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts. I trained as a professional dancer. And um, in my last year, I got a internship with a contemporary dance company in New York. So I went to New York fell in love, never returned back to the US, I mean back to the UK, and um, I just ended up staying in, in New York, I just fell in love with America and kind of everything America has to offer, and um, that's the story, and I just kind of like went in and out of different types of jobs, and um, I've had two careers prior to my agency, which, you know, a decade each probably and um here i am now that's awesome i mean that's a great story of the american dream so i know you've got two businesses uh you know that you've got running uh, at the moment i mean I'll, I'll let you describe what you've got going on yeah yeah so i yeah two businesses i um i work in digital marketing i have a boutique agency where i work with small businesses primarily startups, funded startups, or businesses that are pivoting. And um, we focus on paid ads, funding pages, email marketing, um, social media. And then um, actually what really, what kind of happened is I accidentally diversified through uh, Facebook groups because I created a Facebook group for uh, women who work in marketing to help myself. And over the past year and a half, it just really blew up. And on the basis of that, I launched an educational platform in May. So it's really early days, but it's super exciting. And of course, you know, being a Facebook group expert, as you are, you know the power of Facebook groups. It's, it's been a really cool experience. Yeah, I mean, launching a brand new business in the middle of the pandemic, you know, a lot of people might be thinking, what's going on there? Now, you mentioned that you're in the performance art space. So how did that transition happen? You know, how did you make that leap from dancing, I suppose, or performance, uh, you know, performance based, something doing something performance based to being a digital marketer? Yeah, I mean, I, I glossed over about a decade and a half. So I... <laughs> So I was, I was taking, I always used to love taking pictures. So when I got to the US, I just continued to take photographs and I ended up eventually working, I got an internship working in a photo agency and I became a producer because I wanted to learn more about the other business side of things. And that led me to opening a photography studio and then I opened like two more locations so long story short at the end of the first run which was the photo studios and that, that business I became very unhappy and um, I just became really not disenchanted but I became uninterested unfocused I was very tired um, 
running out of money, just like floating the business for the last two years. It was really, really exhausting. And I just had an epiphany. I was like, you know what? I just, this is not working anymore. And if I just keep, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you always believe like some, you know, the hand of God will throw something down at you. And it, it, you're always getting a lifesaver from somewhere, <laughs> right? So you, you could just continue continually be in this perpetual state of like oh well one more thing will happen because it, it kind of does right so I just got to the point where I was like you know what there's no more life life raft and I just need to call it a day I'm also not, not I don't see where I can scale this for another 10 years like I just don't want to do it anymore so I ended up closing them ripped rip the band-aid off closed it I ended up getting a day job which wasn't for me I was sort of said, okay, I'll take on a day job and let, let me see if I can make it work in corporate America and let's just give it a shot. And uh, that failed, failed at that, quite big time failed at that. And <laughs> But I want anyone to know that if you're an entrepreneur and you keep trying to shove yourself into corporate America, it won't work. So just take it from me now. If your calling is to start a business or your calling is, to be in a startup, just go do it. Don't waste any more time trying to shove yourself into a job role that isn't you. Um, so then, are you tired yet? Are you exhausted yet? Um, so then, no. I, after that, I was, <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> loving it. Honestly, honestly, here's the thing, right? People look at someone and they think you're an overnight success. They look at the tip of the iceberg and not everything below the water. So everything that you're talking about here is the typical hero's journey, it's the typical entrepreneurial journey. And I love getting that story out, which is why I wanted to see what had <laughs> happened in between. So Yes, I yeah, good. I'm glad I failed loads. I've failed so many times. Lots I've failed loads. I've lost loads of money. I've failed a lot. I've fallen on my face. And it's taken a long time to really feel successful, if you want to call it that. I mean, or to feel like not treading water. Um so once I left the day job, realized, okay, you know, actually the gentleman that I was working for said, look, Laura, you're just too smart for this. You don't need this. You're so nice. You're just, what are you doing here? So he basically was like, just go back into the world and do fly, fly, you know? So um, then I said, how can I use my skills, things that I love? Um, and that's when digital marketing like kind of happened. And I just started to self-learn. I already had it some knowledge about photography, creative direction. I already had like kind of inbuilt intuition for that. Um, but then I started to, you know, just do training. I signed up for Facebook Blueprint. I made it a mission to get a client. And then it just kind of built from there. So, you know, it, that's how it happened. It, mm. It's just been kind of rolling from, from that place. That's great. No, I mean, I, I love that story, honestly, because, uh, you know, it gives you, I suppose, for a lot of people who have been in the digital marketing space for as long as you have, you know, we know what it's like trying to set up, set up a business. And you just touched on, you know, uh, you picked up a client after you did all of these courses. How easy or how difficult was it for, for you to pick up your first client? Um, you know what, I'm kind of a firm believer in sort of, I mean, not to scare anyone, but not fake it till you make it, but you have to say, I'm going to do this, agree to it, and then commit to that, even if you don't know everything. I mean, nobody knows everything. I had to learn, but I couldn't learn unless I had a client to, to, to you know, to give me work to do. So, you know, if you're not, if you're not young and you're not going to traditionally go into like maybe an internship flow um you just have to take the skills that you do have and put those to work so I didn't start off out of the gate offering paid ads I didn't know anything about that I just I knew photography I knew I was a good writer so I said okay I can do day-to-day -day hosting that's where I'll start and then after I started that and then I started to layer things on so you know Rome isn't built on you know in a day. Um, neither and once you get, and I'm sure there are agency founders and owners that have never done any of this work, and they hire people mm -hmm. in and they automate stuff or they outsource. They get the clients and they outsource. So whichever way you choose to do it, you just have to. In my opinion, I would just encourage anyone that's thinking of a life change or starting an agency to make the decision, stick to it, and just 
focus on that and just going forward, you know, because mm -hmm. there's so many reasons why not to do something, but there's so many reasons why you should do something too. And that's a great tip that you've actually shared there, which is to start with, I suppose, your strong point, because you were doing photography for many, many years. You obviously know the power of social media and have doing visual storytelling. You don't jump in into pay dad straight away because although you are learning about it, you are just not quite there yet to sell it as a service. So I suppose that's a great takeaway for people um, who, who are watching this. So you mentioned you're kind of working with uh, startups that have been funded. How did all of that come about? Yeah, so because um, I have an entrepreneurial background, I tended to just be most interested in the companies that kind of needed the most or were more interested in not necessarily in a full service but just you know all of it I you know I love not only just the marketing side of things I also love the business side of things I love seeing something bloom like starting from a, you know starting from a seed and blooming to an amazing flower so and I also really like to feel like I'm part of the company even though I'm an external provider um, so that just kind of put me more towards in like the startup genre as opposed to, you know, an established company. I feel like there's more you can do um, when you're working with a startup. And generally, sometimes the people that work in those companies are more open to it being experimental. So there's just like a little bit more room to, to do different things and to be more part of the team, I think. Mm -hmm. And I mean, did you kind of get, getting the getting to this place where you're like, okay, I actually want to work with startups, you know, um, was that something that you wanted to do immediately or you worked with a couple of different kinds of clients until you got to the place where you're like, actually this startup place is quite fun. Yeah, you know, I, you know, there is this thought that, you know, niche down, right? Like pick a niche and focus on that. I, I like to do lots of different things. So in the beginning I did, work with different types of companies to test it out um and then i quickly realized i set some sort of um some boundaries for myself in terms of the type of clients that i would either pitch myself to or, or offer to work with um and then once i did that it actually became a lot e it did become a lot easier and um i realized you know like beauty the beauty space is not for me the fashion space is not for me um yeah so Again, I would say that if you're just starting, try a few things. Um, and then once you find something that you kind of resonate with, then, you know, maybe you can niche down into that zone if you want. I also worked with a, you know, a construction company and that was different, not for me long term. Um, so, you know, I just experiment, I think. Okay, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Obviously, I suppose... Very few people wake up one day and they're like, I actually want to work in this, in this niche. It's always a bit of a journey. And then you need to find something that you're passionate about to, to last, I, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of, I also, this was a really, this was a really big one for me also after having such a stressful time, you know, with the studios and then also working, going into this corporate job, I just, I also just realized that there was a specific type of person that I wanted to work with and that even if a company came and they had ticked off all the boxes, if I didn't think that we would have good communication, that there would be trust, that we were on the same page in terms of how we work and that the vision was aligned, um, I just you know, decided that I would only work with certain types of people and that really helped me too because it, it it, you know it is just about you know it's not just about the money it's also about like the life that you're creating for yourself and yeah. so sometimes not to be a hippie about it but I just felt like if I wasn't going to be you know raking in all the big bucks and I was trying to cut or create a life that was good for me then the way that I work and communicate with people was also really important. So that also helped a lot because immediately I could see with some clients, that, okay, this just probably isn't going to work out. Like either they, maybe they're, they're fearful of marketing or they're not willing to spend six months investing or whatever it is, whatever the criteria was, but it definitely really helped. It helped me create great relationships with clients. And also it helped me with like, um, 
you know, client churn. So now my retention rate is, you know, it's like a year, two years. It's not so short. So, you know, for that, I'm really thankful. And that, that's definitely something I would say to think about when you're pitching yourself to clients or, you know, trying to decide where, what environment you want to work in. That's, that's another awesome tip, actually, that you've, that you've just shared there, because I think one of the things that a lot of agencies, a lot of consultants, freelancers, call yourself, whatever you want, struggle with is the retention part and how important it is to find someone who is a good fit for you from the beginning to make sure that they're not going to jump ship in a month. So, I mean, what does a, an ideal client look like for you? Yeah, I mean, an ideal client from a business perspective looks like someone or a business that's willing to invest, um, a business that's willing to look at the long-term strategy as well as the short-term strategy, because you know, it's, you can't just try something for a month and then expect results. You know, it's a lot of tweaking. It's a lot of measuring. It's a lot of um, data. It's creative. It's all of that stuff. And everything needs to be working for it to be doing the thing that it needs to do, right? Which is ultimately converting, let's say, you know, they want sales, conversions, whatever the conversion metric might be. So that doesn't happen overnight. And at least, you know, I feel like it's at least three months is the minimum time of commitment for this type of work if you want to do a good job. Um, and sometimes, you know, you find clients that are in sinking ship mode, they're just panicking and they're just like, let's just throw money at it. And then in a month they've used all their money and then they're like, we didn't get what we wanted and then they're gone. So to me, client education is really important and really make, not making them, but really talking them through the process so they understand what's necessary and making them, making them, educating them so they know that it's an investment in their business, just like buying a computer or just like hiring someone, you know, like all of those marketing is an investment and it, it happens over time. It's, it's not short term. Right. Okay. And you mentioned beginning of the interview that you're working on landing pages and page social and quite a few different things uh, being a one-stop shop. I suppose for them, um, you know, how do you kind of, I suppose, summarize all of that in an elevator pitch? If you were to meet your ideal prospect today, uh, you know, how do you present all of that in, in like a couple of sentences? Yeah, right. It's a lot. Um, you know what? I kind of don't, I, I, I like to, if you can't tell, I like to talk a lot. So I think what I do is I try to get to know the client and to find out what they need. So not everybody needs everything all at once, but I definitely say, okay, you know, why are you panicking? Where's the panic coming from? What's the hole that you have in the business that you feel like you're not doing well? You know, how can I help you create these systems? So it's, it's less about me pitching all the services and more about what's going on right now, what are you doing well right now, and what aren't you doing well, or what do you want to be doing more of, and what could we improve? So, you know, it's more like that and less, you know, less pitchy. But I think anyone that is looking to get sales or do lead gen, I always feel like coming from, you know, coming from like, what does the business need is the best angle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that that makes makes perf perfect sense. It's kind of taking that approach of a doctor where, you know, you need to diagnose what's going on wrong first before you write a prescription uh, and, and tell them they need a landing page when they, when they really don't. Um, so what are you doing right now to kind of meet clients, to do prospecting? What does, I suppose, prospecting look like for you? I'm sure you're not doing any cold calling or cold emailing. <laughs> Um, okay, so prospecting now, I'll be really, I have to be honest, it's kind of a little less than it was before COVID hit. My focus actually now is less on generating new clients because I have enough referrals generally to, that are coming, coming to me. So I'm not doing so much cold pitching. Um, I'm really focused on, focusing on being the best provider I can for my current clients. But my business has also kind of shifted with the platform. So Right now, I'd say that I'm not really doing any um, lead outreach. Mm -hmm. um, but if I was, I definitely, cold email does work. I know people say email is dead, but it does work. 
Um, and you know, LinkedIn is a great tool. Also, I've had lot tremendous amounts of business come through LinkedIn. So, um, if you're thinking about where to get started, definitely say you know start with LinkedIn. That's a great, a great tool. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes total sense because we we are kind of you know uh, got to know each other through LinkedIn, LinkedIn as well. So it actually works if you use LinkedIn the right way. And the first message is no, you're trying to sell someone something. Um, so let's talk about um, females in social media and digital marketing. Your your group, how did that all come about? Yeah. So um, I I well well when I started, um, I joined a bunch of groups because I wanted to learn. And I started to feel like it was kind of a boys' club. And no offense to all the boys, it's I love me. all the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had some very, very nice male mentors that have helped me tremendously. So, you know, I, I do love the boys. Um, but there's kind of this kind of, um, you know, this kind of this Gary V thing where it's a bit broy and kind of like um, you know, got to sleep on your floor and you have to kill yourself, otherwise you'll never make a million dollars. And I just found it very, um, just not me. I know you, yeah. we're English, we just kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I just didn't find it. I can't put yeah. my fingers on it, but I just didn't relate to it. And I found it like, well, I want to work smarter, not harder. And I don't want to have circles around my eyes I want to have more time to go to the beach to, to walk my dog I, I just couldn't relate at all on any mm. level um and so and I now we talk about it I just recently got a message a dm from someone who was trying to pitch me something and he started with a young man in, in the like very good looking guy in a nice like shirt but he started with like yo laura and I was just like, I, <laughs> I just can't, I can't have Yo Laura. Like it just, it's not doing it for me. And then I was in another Facebook group for, um, for a, a group that was trying to pitch kind of selling their, their, uh, the group course. And there was pictures of them, like, you know, showing the Lamborghini that he just bought from their, you know, like from the sales of the techniques they use in the group. And I just, I, I just I I can't I can't get in on that. So anyway, I said I, I, boys clubs not working for me. I just need to be able to ask questions, not feel intimidated, not look at your Lamborghini, not sleep on the floor. So I said I just start my own group, and I started a couple of groups prior that didn't really go anywhere. And then this group, I just I said okay, well you know, what is it? It's females in social media. Okay, fine. And um, it just started to grow and grow and grow and grow. And then we got to about uh, 11,000 members. Nice. 11, yeah, it was about 11,000. Yeah, we got to 11,000. We got to like a big number. And I kept saying, well, you know, when we get to, when we get to 10,000, maybe I'll do something. I just don't really know what I'm going to do. When we get to 15, I didn't really know what to do with it. And then in the middle of COVID, which you're right, people are like, you're crazy. What are you doing? I just was like, you know what, enough. I need to monetize and I need to grow this thing. And otherwise I could just have this beast of a Facebook group that just, it's gonna be out of control. I don't have anyone to help me, how am I gonna do it? So that's how the platform kind of came about. And I spent mm -hmm. enough time in the group seeing what the women needed. So I had a very deep insight as to what the holes were in their learning and what they were asking for. And then that's how it kind of all became the thing. That's, that's really awesome. Absolutely awesome. And you're totally right. Because, you know, I'm a part of some of these Facebook groups. And like yourself, being male, I can't relate. Because often you find 16-year-old gurus with a Lamborghini in a tank top somewhere in Miami. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, <laughs> if reality was like that, I'm sure things would be very, very different. Um, but yeah, yeah. the whole kind of, you know, 10x yourself to a heart attack, always hustle, forget about everything else. You know, it just doesn't work. You're right. I mean, I think, you know, Brits are a lot more skeptical when it comes to, you know, uh, kind of dealing with um, people selling the American dream. <laughs> if you like. Yes, yes, totally. I, I just find it so unrealistic. And even when I joined 
you know, I'm watching their Facebook live streams and thinking, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I'm going to learn something. Let's see what's going on. But people really buy into it. And then I feel like they get disappointed. They end up spending a lot, and it's not cheap. They spend a lot of money on joining the courses. And then, you know, it's, it's not cheap. And it's not, I, I don't believe it to be true a lot of the time. Um, maybe I just need to go through the course myself and see if it works. But I just, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it doesn't work. And I know because I know how hard it is. And you know, it, when you have a Facebook group, you know, it's content, it's going live. It's, you know, it's, it's not that easy. It's not that simple. So, yeah, I don't know. No, I, you're I right. You're absolutely right. Because I've spoken to a lot of people who've been through the courses and they all talk about pretty much the same things. You know, if you're going to bake a cake, there's so many ways that you can bake a cake. Same with kind of, if you're going to go get clients or if you're going to deliver a paid social campaign or whatever, you know, you know, nobody's inventing uh, the wheel. If you're like reinventing the wheel or anything like that, it's just everyone has their own take. And I think there's a lot of copycatting as well. People could, yeah, you know, copy, people see someone doing well, they copy their course, put their own tweak, whatever it might be. And that's a whole industry in itself. But education is a space that kind of, you know, th there is a huge need for education. But I find that a lot of it is filled, filled with hype. So I know we're very quickly running out of time. Let's talk a little bit about your education platform, you know, to, to wrap up, you know, how's that coming along? What's your mission with that? Yeah, so if you want to say we're in year one, um, the mission I would say is to, so it's a membership site basically, so you subscribe to the membership. It's really at this time focused on beginners or entry level, I would say, or even people that are pivoting, you could be older and then they want to, you know, go into the field of social media marketing. So it's a subscription. Um, subscription gives you access to free resources, so a lot like pricing, um, what else do we have? We have like hashtag tools, we have downloads, all a bunch of stuff, some mini workshops, things like that. And then also access to the Facebook group, which is now this, you know, big community. Um, but my big push or my big goal for, you know, the end of the year is to really focus on jobs. So, you know, how do you get hired? How do you put your resume together? Having all the jobs accessible on the platform. I mean, they're there now, but really like pushing in a bit of a bigger way. And then also mentorship. So how can I, and I've been really toying with this, but how can I set these women up with mentors or how can we do like kind of mini mentorship weeks or, you know, maybe it's like a four week morning meeting or something like that. So right now the goal is to, you know, keep creating content, keep creating courses, but really by the end of the year, I'd really love to just be able to highlight the job and also the mentorship. So that's my goal. And of course, continue to bring women into the fold because, you know, the more women we have, the more we can do. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Now, if you are, if you identify as a woman and you are watching this yes. and you want to be mansplained digital marketing, then go on Facebook and go on LinkedIn and find Laura's profile. On that note, Laura Little, thank you very much for your time. Oh. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm happy to just talk to anybody if you need assistance or you have more questions about the Facebook group or the questions about the platform. And um, please, you know, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. And I want to thank you so much for having me and letting me jabber on. I feel like I just <laughs> blew up this space with all my talking. Oh, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a great start for me. <laughs> Good. And if you want to visit the platform, you can just check it out. It's on fizdom.com. So that's F-I-S-D-M.com. And we have some like cool blog resources and other things that are free. So you can totally sign up for those things also. And you don't have to pay if you don't want to. Great. Great.